So hello, my name is Velin. I'm a SharePoint developer for a very long time. Um, today we'll talk about another topic related to DevOps pipelines. So I'll be your, your DevOps guy again. And this is uh, about putting uh, quality gates on your uh, uh, DevOps pipelines, DevOps automated pipelines. And I'll, I'll just talk what is a quality gate in a minute. But this is a follow-up on previous four demos. So you can find those previous four demos on those URLs and build on top of that we'll add additional knowledge. So there might be terms that if you're not familiar, just go back to those URLs and try to catch up with those basics, like one and two are like basics on Azure DevOps pipelines. Um, so today is quality gates. Why quality gates and what is quality gate? So in the DevOps pipeline, when you do continuous integration, you usually grab the, uh, grab your code from the source control, uh, build it, package it, and move it to a tenant, and this is your deployment. Why you would care about quality gates? Because it's part of the CLI pipeline. Like, this is more to prevent uh, uh, unhealthy code to go through production. So you have uh, different quality gates just to keep your solution healthy, your features healthy, and uh, uh, try to prevent as much as you can uh, uh, bad code going through the pipeline into production. So uh, there are some nice reasons on the Azure DevOps site here, scenarios for gates, incident management, blah, 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 quality validation. But basically for me is a developer can, uh, without knowing the code, can ruin the code or can ruin a feature, and that feature might slip through uh, the production. And uh, that, like me, I, I usually break my team's code, uh, and you know, then then we have uh, more critical issues. So. Um, going further is, like, you can go there, I can share that URL, and you can see all the different scenarios for quality gates. But a gate basically is things that will stop that code going to production. And two quality gates could be unit tests as one quality gate. If your solution has unit tests, and if unit test fails, that means something's wrong, and you won't pass that quality gate. And another is code coverage which is, again, if you don't meet a, a certain threshold, uh, the build will fail and uh, someone has to fix it. Like, how we can do that with the SharePoint framework um, is I have a build here already. So let me see my build. And uh, I already have definition prepared for you. And today I'll be using the gist because we already had a few samples done in Jest, and it's easy to configure, and we know how to do it, and we can easily embed it as part of our pipeline. I'll show you a few URLs here, because I want, uh, again, this is not a basics, and how to set up Jest, uh, like myself, and Paolo, and Andrew Colno, all, all have good uh, good content on that, and I'll just try to paste that into the chat, so you have all these URLs, and, and can follow up on that. But uh, now here is a par uh, part of my build process. I'm building the solution here, but after I build the solution using gulp bundle ship, then I run unit tests. And if a unit test fails, you can see my test suits here. If unit test fails, that will fail at that step here, and it won't let me proceed to the next step. Also, you have all these. Uh, uh, that's a report on coverage, and if you have a certain coverage thresholds, and if they're not met, uh, Jest will automatically exit with error, and that will fail the build again. So it's very easy if you're using Jest and put it as part of your pipeline to do coverage and tests at the same time with only one line of, of execution here. And uh, in general, well, when we build quality gates, we first start with unit tests and, and coverage. So uh, th that's why I started with that. Maybe in the next episode, we can talk about the different quality gates. But how this has been done, right? So I'll open my YAML file just to show you how it looks. Then I can try to break it just to show you how this, this might fail. Um, here is my code and my solution, and usually in the package JSON file you have all your JS configurations. But the important piece for now, for, for now for us is how we control the coverage threshold. It is a nice uh, piece of JSON here that you can plug in into your package file. 
under the JSON configuration, and you can set uh, some uh, uh, threshold in persons, and, and here you can see that my branches has to be covered by tests and 100%, my line statements, functions, everything has to be 100%. Everything below that will fail the build. And uh, then we have some unit tests here. And I'll just try to fail a unit test, I'll say six. And I'll run the build git. Uh, fail by purpose. Okay, so a unit test will fail. Let's imagine that uh, the, the unit test is supposed to be correct and my functionality is supposed to be broken. I don't have time to break my functionality, so I failed the test just to show you how this will work in the pipelines. But the build definition, again, as from the previous episodes, you have virtual uh, machine where the, the, the build will run that triggers whenever something goes to the master branch in GitHub. Then on that virtual machine, we install Node. We do npm install to bring all our, pa all our packages for the SharePoint framework solution. Then we do curl bundle, and after that, we do npm test. When we do npm test, because my configuration is set up here like that, uh, let me just show you. So when I do test from my solution, I will simply run the gist testing. And uh, it will run all the tests, the coverage, and after that, if everything is successful, it will, will, will package the solution and we'll make that solution available as artifacts uh, here. And then at the end, we can just create a nice little report that can be displayed. I will show you how this works. Uh, but basically, that's using another NPM package. So if you go here, you'll see that I'm using just JUnit, and that will generate, and this is a configuration, that will generate an XML file that Azure DevOps uh, pipelines can use and generate a nice report. Now, let's go to the build, uh, and there should be a build running with that build definition already, and we are at the stage of npm install, but while we're waiting, uh, like my previous episode was about parallel tests. So you can run that in a sequence, as, I, uh, as you had that uh, definition here. But you can run that in a parallel because, no, no, no. So this is how we run it in a sequence. I already showed you that. But we can run that also in parallel because just doesn't care if the package is being bundled or um, not. And it runs independently. It compiles the, uh, the, the TypeScript. And here you can see that uh, uh, we can run it in multiple jobs in parallel. So we can build the solution in one, uh, in one job. And we can run the tests separately in, a, uh, in another job. So the, this is handy in case you have uh, like 10,000 tests and they run slowly and you don't want to wait. It's like more to, to um, save you some time. And the build is running. Actually, both of my builds are running. It's the parallel build is running. The other one uh, is actually paused. So we'll go just to the parallel to see what's happening. So, yeah. So that job didn't succeed. It, and it didn't succeed it because I failed the test. Like, if we go to, to that job here, you can see that the, the piece with, uh, with just failed. And actually, what it's saying is your tests failed. So that test failed because you expected a value of, shit, of, of, of six, but actually the value is four. And you can, uh, like a developer, can go and quickly fix that. But also what it failed, it failed the threshold, because the threshold on coverage, because my coverage is not 100%. You can see that I don't have spe specific classes are not up to 100%. So here below it says threshold not met. <coughs> this will still throw an error. Even I, even that test succeeded, it would still fail because of the threshold. And this is how you can control it. Um, that's pretty much it. All the code is available as a sample uh, in the GitHub, in the SharePoint uh, repository. I think I've sent that as URLs. Uh, and um, you can try it and see if that works for you. That's that for my side, basically.
Awesome, awesome. Thank you, Velin. Thank you very much for that one. Uh, really, really useful stuff. And good to get this stuff also covered and recorded as a video guidance. Uh, and it, everything will be released, obviously, in the SharePoint Dev YouTube channel. So uh, you can access this information and the videos and recordings uh, in there. Yeah.